What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex, I'm a filmmaker based out of St. Louis, and today I'll be talking about my Red Scarlet W build. Oh my gosh, this has been, this has been one heck of a dilemma. I'm not gonna lie to you. So starting out with the brain of the camera, it is a Scarlet W 5K Dragon sensor. Um, so far, I've had this for about five months now, and I gotta say, I love it. Later on in the video, I'll actually talk about why I went with this over a Red Komodo. On this side of the camera, we have the wooden camera side cheese plate. It allows me to mount side handles, Teradex, a bunch of different options, a bunch of quarter 20s, a bunch of uh, 3.8s right here, and then it also has a area rosette, which is what I use the side handle for. Here on the bottom of the camera, we have the wooden camera base plate. This allows me to mount my rails and just a bunch of different accessories. Has a bunch of cord 20s all around, super useful so far, but really just using it for the, the rails. And then the base expander module on the back gives me all the inputs that I would need. Media, 480 gigabyte mini mag. Uh, the 5K sensor uh, has decently small file sizes in comparison to other cameras that I've used in the past. So uh, this has really been most of what I need on most sets, which has been pretty nice. That goes right in there. Um, when I was buying this camera, I went with the 4.7 inch uh, monitor, which if you are buying a DSMC2 body, if you want to use like the red monitors, just go with the seven inch one. I don't recommend the, the 4.7 inch. It is cheap. This is only about 800 bucks versus like the 1900 used price for the seven inch. But I ended up going with the small HD and I'm actually pretty stoked about this. That has red controls and it's been super nice to have. So I got this small rig top handle. I use a bunch of different top handles. This one is the one I'm currently using. All right, for the side handle, this is the small rig, just wooden side handle for the right side. This thing has been super nice to have. It is probably the most comfortable side grip I've ever used. It's only hundred bucks. It's a lot cheaper than any of the red side handles. Obviously the red side handle is a little more like, you know, functionality, record buttons, different things like that. But for a cheap side handle option, I really recommend this one. It's been just a joy to use and I have no problem holding this all day, so. I think this pairs really well with the wooden camera side plate. Um, again, just area rosette right to the side of the camera and that has been super nice because it's super quick to just take on and off and turn around. Um, you know, you're not limited to only having it out like this. If it's on a shoulder mount, sometimes I might, I may put it up to the side or like facing up so that I can kind of have more of the weight on my, you know, through my arm rather on my wrist. Um, but yeah, this side handle has been super, super nice to have. The V-mount batteries I'm using are these Core Mini Neo batteries. These have been super nice having the um, screen in the back. And also these are red approved, I believe. So when you put them on the camera, you're being able to see, you know, how much time you have left on the actual monitor. Sometimes it only gives you the voltage, but with these batteries, you're able to see how much time you have left on the actual monitor, which has been super nice. So a few months ago on a music video, we rented the whole set of DZO Vespa Primes and I fell in love with them. Everyone talks about how they're like in the middle between vintage and modern and I would say, um, agree with that, like 100%, exactly what they look like and they look fantastic, super sharp, but have really nice magenta bloom and it, it looks super awesome. So I went ahead and bought the 35 Prime and have been loving it so far. So this is the first configuration that I'll, I'll use my red in. It's mainly using this rig on adventure films. If I'm, you know, going out hiking with my bag, I can throw this in my bag. I can have this on the side of a wall. If I'm shooting rock climbing, super small, it's not, you know, obtrusive in the way. Or, you know, if I'm using this on a gimbal, I'll throw this on there. Um, I've actually fit this all on the DJI RS3 gimbal, which is really impressive. I didn't have the side or top handle on, but besides that, I had all this on. And actually, I was even running this map box, which was kind of crazy. But um, I'll do that for the, for the gimbal rig, or even like if I'm mounting this a car, again, something small and light that can get in tight places and that this rig is perfect for that. But for most of my productions, I am not using this rig. I have it in the like studio setting, if you will. So, you know, dual battery, seven inch monitor, map box, all the jazz. So we'll start building that now. So starting off, I'll put these rails on. I don't know what brand these are, but I believe they're like eight inch rails. Slide in right there, lock these down. This allows me to run the map box. Um, when it comes to map box, I'll throw this on real quick. This is the small rig. What is it called? Like some like star trail. I don't know why they call it that. If I have to give my short review on this map box, it works. I have the VND in there. 
I don't care for it the most. It was 350 bucks, so you know, you're getting what you're paying for, you know? But it works, it definitely works. It gets, you know, flag, uh, works to cut out any flares, and uh, it's decent for 350 bucks, but I, I don't necessarily care for it too much. Uh, this mount right here on the bottom tends to like loosen by itself and this will kind of like start wiggling about which I don't care for and the VND setup it, it protrudes so if I want to just pull this out I can't and I have to lift up on both of these side side bits which uh, when I'm by myself can be kind of annoying uh, the last set I was on I had a first AC it was super easy and it wasn't that big of a deal but I'd say if you're by yourself and you're trying to like take this VND in and out, if you're going from outside to inside a building, it can just take a little bit, but it is what it is. Again, 350 bucks, you get what you pay for. And I guess for that, it's not that bad. So this will slide right on there. Tighten these guys on. Not necessary by any means, but I have these little like rail end caps um, that protect the rail if I bump into anything, which I feel like I'm pretty hard on my gear, so maybe that's nice to have. So this is more of like a documentary build, if you will. It's still small and light and nimble, but you're able to run filters in the front, fizz motors if you need it, and then depending on the project, I'll run the seven inch monitor. Maybe I'll keep this. Depends on how light and small I need it to be, but this is more of like your medium run and gun while still having some functionality. All right, so now into the studio build, we'll take this battery off. And we have this shark fin. This core shark fin allows me to run two batteries at one time, hot swap. And this has been super nice to not only hot swap batteries, but also to balance out the camera. It's pretty front heavy. So most of the time, especially with the matte box on. And so having this on the back allows me to even out the weight distribution. So this shark fin's probably been my favorite purchase recently for this camera. I've been able to uh, use it to hot swap batteries, which has been super nice on these recent productions. Last you know, two weeks ago we shot a TV series and I was able to keep the camera on all day without you know, cycling the power on and off. This camera takes about 40 seconds to turn on. So you can imagine like how long that takes on set and you know, you're, you're missing moments. This is more of like a run and gun TV series where funny moments are happening and we want to catch those. So it was super nice being able to hot swap batteries and get those on the charger right away. The last piece of this rig is the monitor. So I have the small HD 702 touch and this actually just came in the mail today. Um, in the past, I was using the Atomos Shinobi 5, and I've used Atomos products for a long time and love them, but a few weeks ago, I was the AC actually on a commercial and pulling focus all day on this 702 Touch, and I fell in love instantly. Just the quality of the image on this monitor, the size of it, and then also just all the tools, it made it my job super easy and fast. And you know, it's small HD is a industry standard and there's a reason for that. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. I was able to get this on like an open box sale for 1400. So that was nice. They are expensive, but again, you get what you pay for. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on this monitor. And then holding that monitor, I have a small HD, small, small HD. The friction arm I'm using is just a small rig, little friction arm that I got, I got off Amazon. So this is the final rig. You can consider this like the studio build, if you will. This is what I'm using on most of my productions. It's been super nice. It has all the inputs and power out that you would need for any like fizz motors or anything like that. Um, and it weighs about 17 pounds, which has been super nice for like handheld use. A lot of my, uh, you know, shoots are handheld or on an easy rig. And this has been super nice to get rid of those micro jitters and have a really cool little like handheld look. So real quick, I wanna to touch on why I bought the red and specifically why I got this one over the Komodo. So prior to owning this red system, I was on the Canon ecosystem with the R5C and the R5. And so the Komodo just made a lot more sense. You know, I already had the RF mount. Uh, I previously had the 1DX Mark II, so I had C Express cards, or sorry, C Fast cards. And so it seemed like just a lot better option. You know, you're not using proprietary media and monitors and everything that the TSMC2 bodies have. But when I started doing more research and actually diving into the red ecosystem, the frame rates kind of ended up being the reason I went with the TSMC2 bodies. So. Uh, I shoot a lot of automotive action, things like that, and those kind of require high frame rates. And the Komodo, you know, you have to crop into 4K to get 60 frames, and then it's like a 2K Super 16 crop to get to 120, and I just couldn't justify that. So I ended up going with the red Scarlet W for those reasons. So real quick, I wanna talk about client perception. When you're coming to set with like a big rig, you know, matte box and all this junk on here, your client, you know, looks at you with a different eye. Like, okay, cool, like, I got what I paid for, and, Although that's dumb, you know, it is a real thing.
but by no means do you need a big rig, you know, on your camera. You could just run in with a little mirrorless camera and do just fine. A lot of our productions were actually just running in with a FX3, not rigged out, just a top handle and a microphone, and it works great for most situations. So as I mentioned earlier, this rig has been super great for handheld use. A lot of the time, my hand's just going on the side handle. This is kind of fitting in this pocket right here, and then I'm pulling focus off the barrel. And this gives me three points of contact, super stable, and it's, you know, getting rid of those micro jitters. If you are using this shark fin, I will be, I would say be careful because the uh, two release buttons are on the back. So sometimes you can, you know, push in and bump that. So I'd be careful about that. So overall, this has been a very versatile, you know, setup for a bunch of the productions I'm on. Like I showed earlier, you know, there's a bunch of different configurations that you can put this red in. And that's what I love about it so much is it can be super small and compact, or you can rig it out like this and just do a full studio build. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions about the rig or any of the parts I have on this camera, comment below, subscribe for more. I'll be posting a lot more behind the scenes breakdowns, camera breakdowns, things like that. I think that's all. Love you guys. Live your life. Have fun. We'll see you next time. Peace.